name is Jaden, and welcome to a universe I've given up at this point. Um, it's been a while. The last video I made was on Morbius. And... Um... Yeah. But today we're going to be talking about two movies that kind of coincide... Well, they don't kind of. They do coincide into each other. Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. So, Multiverse of Madness is the newest MCU film that's been released, and it's been pretty divisive. Either you, uh, you love it, or you think it's fine, or you think it's trash. That's what I've been seeing a lot now. But, yeah, so, before I get into that, let's talk about the first Doctor Strange. So, I have never seen all of it until this most recent watch. And I actually really liked it. It came out in, what, 2016? And it is probably my favorite Marvel solo film. It is... Doctor Strange is my second favorite superhero behind Spider-Man over here. Um, but, yeah, he, uh, he really... I don't know. It's just, I think he's so cool and his powers are amazing and they really don't go to waste in this one. Uh, the direction is really cool, too. I actually really like Benedict Cumberbatch because he kind of has his arc in this first one. And the CGI looks is really well done uh, this, for 2016. For some reason, like, compared to No Way Home CGI er, in earlier movies, like, even now, some of the movies, like, even Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, uh, Davy Jones' beard looks... Uh, just Davy Jones looks spectacular, but then, like, uh, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home looks like a video game, which, eh. But, yeah, uh, that's one thing. Uh, Michael Giacchino's score, I love Michael Giacchino. He's my favorite film composer. And, yeah, I really think that it is a great Marvel film, and I do think it's underrated because it's not that long which is, makes it a lot easier. It clocks under under two hours, but like the post credit scenes are fine, whatever, it kind of plays into Thor Ragnarok. But it really is just such an interesting movie and uh, one that kind of introduces ideas that they actually play into, which, yeah. That's my thought on the first Doctor Strange. If you don't know my rating system, an eight out of 10, 29 out of 10, is a golden ticket. 9.5 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 is a trophy. I'm going to be giving Doctor Strange an 8.5 out of 10. Once again, I think it's my favorite solo movie. Um, Non-sequel solo movie, I should say. And yeah, it is up there for, I think it's my top, in top 5 MCU territory. So let's get into the second one. This is going to be spoiler free. Doctor Strange 2, I really liked it. And that's for the sole purpose that it was directed by Sam Raimi. Yes, I do know that behind the scenes it didn't live up to its full potential. Like, the direction was difficult. Like, they had to do some stuff that made it more marvel -y. But I really liked the shift in tone where it didn't feel like one straight. It kind of, it stands out. It is the first movie in the MCU that I can consider a softcore horror film. Uh, it has decent, really good gore for a PG-13 big budget superhero film. And of course it's Sam Raimi, so it's going to have spectacular cinematography. And just, it, the humor is not as heavy as, that I like. Um, I do like some of the ideas they introduce, and I really like how Wanda's character arc, it really works here for me. And some things, they don't make as big of a deal about some things as you'd think they would, but it really does work. Um, like some of the characters in it, they don't have much to do, and they introduce things and then they kind of just get rid of it really quickly. But that's not that big of a deal to me because, uh, if, see, the thing is, if this wasn't a part of the MCU, um, and this was kind of just, like, if Doctor Strange was, like, its own thing on its own, I don't think people would be making such a big deal about it because it is a very short film for an idea as big as this. 
Uh, the pacing is very inconsistent, very all gas, no brakes, but then it could also slow to a halt. Um, it has some really fun action and stuff, but like if it wasn't a part of the Doctor Strange, I really wish they went all out and made this rated R. I really hope there's like a two and a half hour director's cut that gets released, uh, release the Raimi cut. Um, but yes, Ra Sam Raimi is probably my favorite filmmaker of all time. I have the Evil Dead 2 screenplay right here. Uh, I got the Evil Dead and uh, Spider-Man. The Evil Dead franchise is one of my favorite franchises in general and my favorite horror franchise franchise are not my favorite but up there um but yeah it's just I wish people like I really like the film it's obviously not perfect it does have a really big amount of issues but it also has a lot of good stuff for me like the CGI was great the standout moment was uh something to do with music and the score is also great, but it kind of utilizes music. Outside. You'll j just see it and you'll figure it out. I think it's my number two Marvel movie because it is the best on a technical standpoint, in my opinion. I know pe not a lot of people aren't going to agree with that because it has the best cinematography. Um, it is significantly better than No Way Home in quality. Uh, yeah, it's just it works so well for me. And it's disappointing to see so many people hating on it because it is such a great movie that is that doesn't really fit into the franchise, you know? I don't know. That's just my opinion. I can't wait for it to go on Disney Plus because that's when we'll get to watch it again and again and again and again. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I do think it's a worthy sequel. Uh, it's better, but then it also... You know, it has, my biggest issue is probably the pacing because it goes by really quickly. It's kind of like Spider-Man Homecoming with a sense that it's not, it doesn't feel like one whole thing. Like the main plot on paper is really simple, but its presentation is kind of not that easy to grasp onto. Um, but like, I don't know. The, uh, it. It's not, it, but it's presentation, it doesn't, it kind of feels like a serial in like a, probably, like a TV series, a vengeful TV series, like a Netflix, like if you're watching uh, a sitcom, binging a sitcom, the situations go in, but this like, it's kind of like a loop, but the character arcs are still going. Like the situations. Um, then it kind of reminds me, I would prefer everything everywhere all at once. I'm not saying this is the best movie of all time because it's not. But yeah, Sam Raimi is the best part about this film. Uh, the end credit scene, the thing is, if you're not a Sam Raimi fan, you're not going to care for it. But not everything has to lead into something else. The post credit scene is a whole different thing. But I don't... Yeah. Um, it has, yeah, once again, horror aspect. The editing is great. There's some Scarlet Witch montages, which I... There's Spider-Man 2 level, all right. But yeah, uh, that's that's my opinion, uh, my spoiler-free opinion on Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, go see it and form your own opinion. Don't listen to everyone online because if you like Sam Raimi, you're going to like this movie for the most part. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be giving Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness also an 8.5 out of 10. I feel like technically they're on par with each other. I would prefer Doctor Strange 2 though. Um, I do not think this film is better than The Batman uh, because I also lowered my rating for that to be an 8.5. But yeah, I uh, I thought it was a great movie, uh, one of the best MCU films, and yeah, just because Tony Stark isn't saying shawarma uh, after someone dies, you know, it's it's whatever. It's Doctor Strange. It's going to be wacky and weird. They can deal with it. Grow up. All right. Yeah. Eight point five out of ten. Title thing. Whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go watch some of Sam Raimi's other stuff because he is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time and uh, he deserves more popularity of the outside of his Spider-Man trilogy, which I do think is amazing, but also the Evil Dead trilogy. Um, yeah, go see this 
in theaters. Also go see Everything Everywhere all at once while you still can inside the theater. It was one of my greatest theater experiences of all time. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay gold, everyone. Doodles.